a woman calls 911, frantically informing that she has been shot in her leg at a park, and the one who shot her just took off running. The operator asks her to stay put and assures her that help will be there soon. Let's get to the story that inspired this incident. Liz and Dave are seen having a good time. In the morning, Liz remarks it has been going well for four months between them. Dave reminds her that they already talked about not being exclusive as he recently got out of a serious 12-year relationship. Dave suggests that they shouldn't meet anymore, but Liz assures him she is fine with casual dating. Dave talks to his manager and friend, Nick, at his mechanic job. He remarks that he wants to keep his options open. Just then, a car pulls up. It's Carrie Farver, who asks if Dave can look at her car that's acting up. After inspection, Dave asks if someone else is going to pick up her car as she mentioned she needs to get to work. Carrie remarks that Dave can ask her directly if she is single or not. Dave fumbles for words, but Carrie sweetly replies that she is single and will be picking up the car herself. Nick asks if he got her number, but Dave remarks it'd be unprofessional getting involved with a customer. Nick insists this is the only way you meet someone special. Now why don't I get managers like that? Carrie returns to get her laptop from her car and Nick encourages Dave to get her number. The two then decide to go out on a date soon. Carrie drops her 16-year-old son, Sam, at her mother, Nancy's place. Nancy expresses her delight at seeing Carrie date again. And we also learn that Carrie takes care of her father, who is undergoing chemo treatment. On the date night, Carrie tells Dave all about her life when two kids rush to Dave, revealing that he also has kids. His ex, Sarah, nicely greets them and ushers the kids away. Carrie comes over to Dave's place, and just then, Dave's apartment buzzer starts ringing. Liz's voice from the other end informs that she has lost the key to her place. Dave says that he will carry the spare key downstairs, and Carrie decides to leave as well. But later, he arrives at her place with a drink and apologizes for the interruption that Liz caused. Carrie remarks that they are old enough to have baggage and tells him about her aggressive ex. After they kiss, Carrie informs that she only wants to keep it casual, and Dave gladly accepts. The two spend more time together. But one night, someone aggressively knocks at the door. Carrie opens it to find her angry ex, James, who asks her why she got a restraining order against him, which is going to ruin his record. Carrie asks him to stop violating it if he cares so much about his record. Before leaving, he warns that Carrie is going to regret this. Dave suggests she call the cops and take her stuff to move to his place for some time as James seems dangerous. Carrie has to commute to work in the morning, so she sends her son to live with her mother and stays with Dave. After Carrie leaves for work, Dave notices that Liz has left her tab at his place, so he goes to return it. Liz thanks him and asks if he could help her with the window that is stuck. He turns around to find Liz trying to flirt with him. Dave gets back and confesses to Carrie about things with Liz. Carrie assures that it's okay. She thanks him for being honest and then goes to have dinner. At work, Dave gets a text from Carrie asking him to move in together. Confused, he denies moving in as they have not known each other for long. Carrie texts him to never contact her again as he has ruined her life, which confuses Dave even more. Back in the apartment, Dave couldn't find Carrie. Nancy gets a call from Carrie's office and learns that she hasn't been at work for two days. She tries calling Carrie, who doesn't pick up. Carrie texts her saying she doesn't want to talk as her life is a mess and asks if Sam could stay over for longer. Nancy agrees and asks if she will come to her cousin's wedding and Carrie assures that she will. Carrie doesn't show up at the wedding and Sam thinks something is wrong. Nancy then files a missing persons report and talks to Detective Adams and Detective Miller. 
she remarks that Carrie would never miss her cousin's wedding. Carrie also has taken her father to every single chemo treatment until now, and they have never gone this long without contact. She informs them about the time when Carrie disappeared 10 years ago for four days and was diagnosed with anxiety and bipolar disorder. She confirms that Carrie has gotten better as she has been taking her meds ever since. The detective assures her they'll do their best to help. Dave keeps getting texts from Carrie who threatens that Liz is going to be sorry for stealing him. At her house, Liz is leaving with her kids when she notices some offensive words on her garage door. She angrily calls Dave, sending him the picture and remarks that her kids saw it. Nancy gets a text from Carrie informing her that she is moving to Wichita for a new job and has sold all the furniture in her house. The detectives visit the garage, and David is stunned to learn that Carrie has been missing. He shows them all the angry texts that he has been receiving and informs them of everything that happened between the two, as well as Liz. Dave goes to paint Liz's garage door, and Liz asks him to spend 4th of July with her. Dave couldn't resist, so he invites her to the barbecue at Nick's place. Nancy brings Sam to his house so he can pack all his belongings and finds Carrie's unused pills. At the barbecue, they are having a great time when Dave gets a text from Carrie saying she can see that he is wearing a blue shirt. Everyone is creeped out when Liz also receives a message with a link to an obituary with a rest in peace caption and a threat that her kids might be next. A few days later, Dave receives a picture of a bonded Liz and Carrie instructs him to dump Liz on a voicemail or she will be killed. Dave tries calling Liz, but it goes to voicemail. He rushes to his car, but finds Carrie's car in his parking lot and calls the detectives. The detectives arrive and find nothing inside Carrie's car trunk. Dave gets a call from Liz who says that she is all right. The next day, Dave apologizes for everything and remarks that Carrie somehow finds every new number he changes. Liz gets a text with another disturbing threat and Dave says she must send this to the detectives. Carrie's father soon passes away and Nancy couldn't believe that Carrie didn't attend his funeral. She instead texted a casual apology and when Nancy insisted on meeting her, Carrie told her that she is a control freak. The police only find one fingerprint on the car, but it doesn't match anyone from their database. Later, Liz gets to her house, which was burnt to the ground along with her puppies. She blames Carrie for everything. The detectives think of a possibility that someone else might be using Carrie's phone as there hasn't been any recent activity in her bank account. They interrogate James, who remarks that he has only said some terrible things because of his bad temper, and he is let go due to a lack of evidence. At a store, Liz and her friend notice Sarah and Dave with their kids. Liz says that Sarah seems to be the kind of person who would do anything to get Dave back from her. She then suggests to the detective that Sarah might be the one stalking Dave and shows him the still coming threat messages. The detective assures he would look into it and with her permission takes her phone to download the texts to their database. Later one night, Sam texts his mom some questions that only she could answer about him. Carrie then replies that she has answered enough questions and asks him to be supportive of her decision. Dave wakes up to find that someone has used his phone to text offensive things to women he's been dating. Sarah arrives there concerned that Dave's door was unlocked and shows him the offensive words written on it. Following this, Dave buys a gun and hides it in his closet. Later at a restaurant, Liz's friend tells Dave the theory that Sarah might be the one stalking him. Dave gets mad at Liz for even thinking such a thing, as Sarah is a kind person, but Liz gets upset seeing him take her side and storms off. Outside, a hooded woman is seen walking towards Liz, followed by a gunshot. The detectives inform Dave that Liz claims she was shot in her leg by Sarah and gives the description of the bullet. 
Dave remarks that it's his gun and rushes back home to find that the gun case is not there. Sarah is brought in for a lie detector interrogation where she claims that she was with her kids the whole night. Liz's fingerprints are taken to differentiate between the victims and the criminal's prints, and Liz is disappointed to find that Sarah wasn't arrested. The tech detective later retrieves Liz's phone's deleted data and finds that she had called Carrie six times before her disappearance. He also learns that she has been using an app that can time text messages and even make it seem that she is receiving the message from someone else. After matching her fingerprints with the prints they found on Carrie's car, they realize that she's been playing all this game. They inform Dave about this as they believe Liz might have killed Carrie. They suggest Dave remains close to Sarah and the kids as they could be in danger. Liz is called to the station where they lie that they have found some human remains and they believe it might be Carrie. Liz again blames Sarah, but the detective remarks that if they had any evidence of Sarah confessing her crime, it would be great. Dave later makes some excuse to inform Liz that he needs to move back in for a while with Sarah because their kid is acting up. Liz loses her calm and storms off. Liz watches Dave move in with Sarah and then calls the detectives, complaining that Sarah got Dave even after the crime she committed. The detective informs her that they can only move forward with rock-solid evidence, and they need the information only the killer would know. Liz doesn't waste much time forwarding the detectives Sarah's apparent detailed confession. They learn that she killed Carrie in her own car and then search the entire car where they find some blood which matches Carrie. Liz is arrested but doesn't confess. Her argument gets refuted by the overwhelming evidence against her and she gets sentenced to life in prison. The film ends as Nancy and Sam console each other and decide to move forward keeping Carrie in their hearts. So what do you think about this one? Who do you believe the killer really is? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more from Movie Shortens, please subscribe to the channel to be notified about when our next video is posted. Thanks for watching.